Okay, if I could have everyone's attention, Carla, could you please take the roll? Mark Arnold, Whitney Hall, Marvin Kusick. Here. Betty Mack. Here. David Mason. Here. Cole Green. Here. John Roberts. James Simonek. Mike Stuber. Here. David Trojan. Here. You do have a quorum. <clears throat> okay, we have a quorum, so I hereby call this meeting to order. Uh, the first item on the agenda is to consider the approval of the minutes of the regular Metropolitan Area Planning Commission meeting of September 16th, 2019. So moved. Second. second. I have a motion and a second to approve those as printed. All those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed, that motion carries. <clears throat> the next item is zoning. Consider a rezoning for property known as lots four, five, six, seven, eight, block one, Alamo Terrace. Located at 202 East Southgate Road from C2 General Commercial District to I2 Light Industrial District. Chris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Planning Commissioner, City Management. Uh, the property is on the screen. I apologize to my audience. I don't, the screen is not working, so please look at this one. Um, currently, the property is on C2. Uh, the people that are wanting to purchase it want to use it for oil equipment storage yard that needs to be I-2 and that's the zoning that they're seeking. Whoops, I just had the one slide here. Uh, this is in Garfield County, just outside the city limits. There is no public water or sewer. Uh, water and sewer is being provided privately. It currently has been used as a veterinarian for Dr. Lisa Bray, if you're familiar with her operation. Uh, she's selling the property. Are there any other questions that I can answer? Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Now, uh, for our next item, uh, we're gonna do something a little bit different than what we've done before. As you can see, it's an extremely long and uh, tedious uh, legal description. So I'm gonna call upon our IT department to read that for us. So if you would, sir. Consider a rezoning for property described as Tract 1, a tract of land lying in the SE-4 of Section 909, Township 22 North, T-22N, Range 6 West of the Indian Meridian, RO-6 Swim, City of Enid, Garfield County, Oklahoma. Also described as being a part of vacated Block 38, 38, and the east one half of Lots 1, 01, 2, 02, 3, 03. 4, 04, 5, 05, 6, 06, and 7, 07, block 37, 37, along with vacated adjoining streets and alleys in the vacated replat of University Place Edition, more particularly described as beginning at a point 1130.30 feet along and following the east section line bearing and 00 degrees 22 minutes 56 seconds e and 58.00 feet bearing and 90 degrees 00 apostrophe 00 w from the SE corner of section 09. Thence 182.27 feet along and following the present west right of way line of 30th Street bearing and 00 degrees 22 minutes 56 seconds e. Thence 374.50 feet along and following the center line of vacated Cherokee Street bearing S89 degrees 34 minutes 33 seconds w. Thence 30.00 feet bearing S0 degrees 22 minutes 56 seconds w. Thence 89.50 feet bearing S89 degrees 34 minutes 33 seconds W to the NW corner on the east slash 2 of vacated lot 01, block 37. Thence 341.04 feet along and following the west line of the east slash 2 of vacated lot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Block 37 bearing S00 degrees 22 minutes 56 seconds W. Thence 58.99 feet along and following the north line of present Oklahoma Avenue on a curve to the left having a radius of 300.00 feet and an ARC length of 58.99 feet and a cord bearing of N69 degrees 54 minutes 20 seconds E and a cord length of 58.89. Thence 271.55 feet along and following the north line of present Oklahoma Avenue bearing N680 degrees 36 minutes 35 seconds E. 
thence 159.77 feet along and following the north line of present Oklahoma Avenue on a curve to the right with a radius of 325.00 feet with a cord bearing of N75 degrees 53 minutes 31 seconds Z and a cord length of 158.17 feet. Thence 19.94 feet along and following the north line of present Oklahoma Avenue bearing N89 degrees 34 minutes 33 seconds Z to the point of beginning, and, Tract 2A, 409 University Boulevard, a tract of land lying in the southeast quarter, SC-4, of Section 909, Township 22 North, T22N, Range 6 West of the Indian Meridian, RO6 Swim. City of Enid, Garfield County, Oklahoma. Also described as being a part of vacated blocks 40 and 38 along with part of adjoining vacated street and alleys and vacated replace of University Place addition more particularly described as beginning at a point 89.70 feet along and following the east section line bearing N00 degrees 27 minutes 56 seconds W and 33 feet bearing N90 degrees W and 862.14 feet along and following the northeasterly line of University University Boulevard bearing N44 degrees 31 minutes 5 seconds W from the southeast corner of section 09, thence 251.26 feet bearing N45 degrees 28 minutes 55 seconds Z to a half an inch rebar capped CA980, thence 405.63 feet along and following the center line of vacated Oklahoma Avenue bearing N89 degrees 34 minutes 35 seconds Z to a half an inch rebar with a yellow cap, thence 197.73 feet along and following the present west right of way of 30th Street bearing N00 degrees 22 minutes 56 seconds Z to a half an inch rebar capped CA980. Thence 19.34 feet along and following the south line of present Oklahoma Avenue bearing S89 degrees 34 minutes 33 seconds W. Thence 134.39 feet along and following the south line of present Oklahoma Avenue on a curve to the left with a radius of 275.00 feet and a cord bearing as 76 degrees 01 47 inches wide and a cord length of 133.06 feet. Thence 271.55 feet along and following the southeasterly line of present Oklahoma Avenue, bearing S60 degrees 36 minutes 35 seconds W. Thence 159.75 feet along and following the south line of present Oklahoma Avenue on a curve to the right with a radius of 350.00 feet and a cord bearing of S76 degrees 47 minutes 49 seconds W and a cord length of 158.37 feet, thence 217.54 feet along and following the present south line of Oklahoma Avenue bearing S89 degrees 34 minutes 33 seconds W. Thence 150.00 feet along and following the northeasterly line of University Boulevard bearing S44 degrees 31 minutes 5 seconds E to the point of beginning, and, tract 2 B, 415 University Boulevard, a tract of land in the southeast quarter, SC-4, of section 909, Township 22 North, T22N, Range 6, 6. West of the Indian Meridian, described as follows, beginning at a point 89.7 feet north and 33 feet west of the southeast corner of the SE-4 of said section 9, thence proceeding in a northwesterly direction along the east line of University Boulevard a distance of 760.35 feet to the true point of beginning. Thence in a northeasterly direction on a 90 degree angle from said University Boulevard a distance of 321.45 feet, thence west 141.6 feet, thence in a southwesterly direction on a 90 degree angle to the University Boulevard 221.45 feet to said University Boulevard. Thence in a southeasterly direction along the east line of University Boulevard a distance of 100 feet to the point of true beginning. Garfield County, State of Oklahoma from R2 Residential Single Family District and C3 General Commercial District to R7 Residential Multifamily District. <clears throat> I, I didn't hear all that. Could we run? <laughs> <laughs> that was good.
That was good. <laughs> but you would know, like to, on, on the first page, if you look at 21 lines from the bottom, it states, center adjoining vacated street and alleys in a vacated replace. Yeah. That, that has to be a typo. It should be replaced. Replaced. Well, I'm not sure, okay. but what I'm saying, whoever legal it is, they may need to want to address that and yeah. make certain it's correct. Uh, I see replat. Our says replaced. In alleys in vacated replace of University Place. Yep. It's on the first page? First yes, page, sir. 21 lines to the bottom. Center. Okay, I'll find it, and we'll check that. And uh, if so, we'll correct it in the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this property is uh, detailed in front of you on the screen in yellow. It's located in the University District. The next slide gives you a little more detail. Uh, the two properties are separated by Oklahoma that travel from University Boulevard to 30th. Uh, you can see the north track is already zoned C3 and a piece of it is zoned R2, which would be right here. And then this track south of it, you have C3 and you have R2 here. The applicant is requesting to rezone all the C3 and the R2 in the yellow box areas as R7 for apartments. We looked at our uh, infrastructure and my engineering department has determined that water, road, and sewer are available and the capacity will be studied once we know what the density is of the apartment project. Mm -hmm. It's recommended for approval. Are there any questions? Uh, Chris, I've actually, I've got a few. In that study, the subsequent study, what, uh, what happens if you find out there is not adequate water? I know the fire department has um, <coughs> traditionally had a, had two, a difficult area there. Two things could happen. The quantity is reduced to what is there, or the infrastructure is improved to support the density that the developer desires. So and there's two ways to solve who's, that. Whose cost, who would bear that cost? Uh, improving infrastructure is the cost of the developer. Um, the other question I've got is that particularly the, the south area that's currently R2. This piece? In the, yes, in the next slide. Um, is, that, uh, is that area a, a low-lying water? Uh, is that flood zone and, and displacement? How's that going to be handled in that area? Uh, I can check that. I, I don't know off the top of my head. Do you, Marley? Can you bring up uh, Meshach and can you help Dana turn that on? We'll bring up our resources and we'll be able to answer that question. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, we do have somebody signed up, but before I'll make sure I've answered all the commission's questions. Just give us a second. All right. But even Car if this is rezoned tonight, you would still come back before us with the plat. Yeah, that's correct. It still has to go through site plan approval. Right. And uh, you're a recommending body to the Mayor and Board of Commissioners on rezoning. So <clears throat> your, your motion that you make tonight will be carried forward to the City Commission for their consideration on November 5th. <clears throat> okay, help me out just a little bit, Chris. Uh, currently it's zoned, what do we say, C2? Zoom in a little bit more, please. Uh, there's, there's two zonings there, C3, C3 and R2. <clears throat> C3. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, here it is. If what? Go ahead. You've got a truck if you could just here. move it down a little bit. This is Oklahoma, so there's a little bit of R2 on C3 I south. See. A bit more. And then there's a little bit of R2 on this it's not. C3 there. Okay, I didn't see it marked on there. What does C3 encompass? What C3 uh, what? is general commercial. So in your mind, look at West Garriott. Okay. From like Van Buren to Garland. All that, that's our, our uh, most common retail okay. zoning. Thank and R2 you. is typical single family. <clears throat> uh, a lot of what you see right here in this neighborhood, that would be R2. Okay, there was a question about drainage, and I'm gonna ask my engineer to articulate it. Have I given you everything you need, Raleigh? Yep. Okay, go. <laughs> so it is not in the 100 year floodplain, so it is in 500 years, so we don't regulate that. Sorry, we can't hear you. So it's not in the floodplain, that is, yeah. it's not in the 100 year 100 year floodplain, floodplain yes. Okay. Um, and then I assume that uh, if they're putting in apartments, the displacement of water, I'm, I'm just wondering if there's enough, enough space in there to, you know, to hold, you know, 
Because I assume on something like that, they'd have to have a detention. To address that, we'll actually have to see the site plan, what the runoff is, and then our stormwater ordinances require the developer <clears throat> to re detain that delta, that difference, and let it go leave the site as it does in its natural state. So uh, at this point, we can't tell you whether there is or isn't, but I can assure you in the audience that our ordinances have um, systems in there that address that very issue as to where we don't flood a downstream neighbor. Did, did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Are there other questions before I give up the podium? Okay. Thanks, you, Dana, for doing that. Uh, we have one person signed up. It is Michael Batchelder. Would you like? Would you like to be up there, sir? Oh, uh, that picture. That one. That's what's up there. Okay. You see that? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Forgive me. I'm new at this. Well, first uh, thing you do, if you would, sir, again. Tell us what your name is. Oh, sure. My name is Michael Batchelder. I live at 419 University Boulevard. <coughs> uh, the area I'm going to, my first opening statement is I want you to not approve this zoning. I, I, it just doesn't fit my lifestyle. Uh, I'm retired. I like the community. It is very peaceful, tranquil. I don't want it messed up. Okay. What I'm talking about is the lower section there below that yellow line. Our property is that yellow line to University Boulevard, to 30th Street, to O.A.K. Garrett. My sister and I own that property together and everything. Uh, this is our homestead. Been there for 75 years, 80 years. How, how long? Long time. And I, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> I just don't want it messed up. I want it left tranquil and peaceful for the whole neighborhood. The entire University Boulevard from the college down is peaceful and quiet. Uh, we've got the beautiful golf course across there and it's just a nice living area. I just don't want it changed. Okay, thank you. So for clarification, did you say you own the property south of the yellow boxes? Everything south of the yellow boxes. From University to 30th Doe and K. Garriott? Yes. Okay. The area that says R2? R yes, yes. Okay. Uh, the, the, the little line you had that represented the creek that went back just off the 30th Street, that does flood all the time through there. We call it Lake Dudley. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. we have other people in the audience that would like to speak, but did not know they needed to sign up. So I would encourage you to recognize them at this time. Okay, thank can, you very much. I can do that. Uh, who else would like to speak, if you would, please? Could you get up to the podium and please give me your name? And, and we'll need their address too, please. And address, please. My name is Judy Finch, and I live at 2763 Shirley Drive. It would be the last home on Shirley Drive, which is, I guess, the west boundary that they show on the larger C3. I'm, I'm the last one on the corner of Cherokee and Shirley. That, that street, Cherokee, does not go through. Is there a chance that those streets will be opened up, that they will continue along those lines, both Shirley and Cherokee? I think we can answer that. Uh, with what we have in front of us, uh, the street's been vacated for years. There is no plan as far as I know. I think Morali might be able to answer that. We don't have any plans right now, so. So on these apartments, can you tell me where they plan to access from? Not at all. We haven't got the, the site plan. All we're doing tonight is looking at rezoning it from commercial, which means that they could put, anybody could put gas stations, 
businesses of any kind there because it is not owned by anyone other than this person here and it's commercial. So C2, as that was one of the reasons I asked Chris, uh, what is C2, or is it C2 or C3, 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 C3 excuse C3. me, uh, is a, a commercial zoning. And uh, anything that you see on, on West uh, ONK Garriott, anything like that could be put in there right now. Well, I know businesses have certain restrictions where they have to put fences around, right, around their... For a business. But yes. But that's the issue right now is we want to zone it from C3 back I, to residential. I understand the issue, but if, there, if this were fenced off and away from the neighborhood, it would be a whole lot different than having them in your backyard. I am at this stage, if I may. Go ahead. Um, Getting the zoning doesn't guarantee site plan approval. I understand. There, this is more of a legal process that, that we have to go through. Basically, we have to do this step before he can go proceed with his site plan and his engineering. They may determine after they go through all of that that they can't do anything with it. But until we legally zone it, City, the city can't look at it, the engineers can't do anything with it because it's not zoned for that. It, this is kind of, unfortunately, this is a little more just kind of a mechanical procedure, um, kind of the first rung on the ladder, if you wish. Okay, well, I want to get my call in early. I do want to set your mind at ease. What the commissioner said is correct, this is rezoning. However, when it does develop, uh, it will come in a form of a site plan, and our site plan requirements require multifamily, R7, to be screened from your property. So there, there will be a fence between where you're at and your neighbors, okay? okay. That was your question, and I want you to know that, that the city and, and the, require that. Okay. My other problem with it is I am directly hmm. catty corner to the largest C3 on that, and that lot, as I said before, we call Lake Shirley. When we have more than an inch of, a rain, of rain in an hour, we have a pool out there, a nice little lake. It rains more than that, we have a bigger lake. It drains off fairly quickly, like in a day or two. But if you, put a, if you built that land up there to be able to have something level, it would be a blockade to the water. Okay. And I'm like the rest of them. I like my tranquil neighborhood. I don't want a bunch of apartments sitting there. And it's, I never worried when I bought the house three years ago because it's not a good commercial place either. So that's my vote. Thank you for your time. Do we have anybody else? My name is Ruth Dorsch. I live at 2800 East Oklahoma Avenue. I'm the only house on Oklahoma Avenue. And, you know, I'm like them. I like the tranquility. And, you know, when we bought the property, you think, yeah, something could happen. Something could, they could put a trailer park in across from me. It's an empty lot. But um, anyway, I just wanted to state that I am concerned um, what it would do to the uh, value of my property. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else? My name is Kyle Osborne. We live at uh, 2721 Shirley Drive, which is a little bit further north of what you see there. Um, it's around the corner. We face the north, and we face northwestern campus. We bought that property also for the tranquility, how quiet it is. 
the fact that I sat there the first night moving in for an hour and a half and didn't see a car go by. <laughs> We're not interested in having anything change. We would love to see it stay the way it is. And my concern is the amount of water that we do see in that creek bottom whenever we do get rain. And that's, that's my concerns. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> Commissioners, do you have any other questions? I'll call for a motion. I'll make a motion. Adoption. I'll make a motion to approve it. So we I'll second it. I have a motion and a second to uh, approve the zoning from C3 commercial to R7. Is that correct? Yes. R7 residential. And R2. Okay. And R2. Okay. All those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? Just I'd one. say it's unanimous. Do we have one? one? Okay. One. I have one. Okay. Okay. That motion carries. And the next item on the agenda is adjourn. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to adjourn. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed, we're adjourned.